Hey, everybody. Welcome to Roundtable. We're so glad you're back with us again. Today, we're going to be talking about week three and week four from our sermon series, Perfect 10. It's been so good. But first, if you haven't been able to catch up on those messages, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel right now. Go watch both of those messages before you jump into this conversation so you have full context for what we're going to be talking about today. But week three was called 90s Christian Tees Are So Lame and So Vain. And I couldn't agree more. (laughs) (laughs) I learned about 90s Christian Tees at the sermon because I didn't get to experience them in real life. And I saw the pictures. You're missing out, Paul. And the title was correct. They were so lame. (laughs) I don't think missing out is the way that I would categorize it. Yeah, I don't think you had FOMO for that season. (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) I just remember a place called Mardell. And you went into it. And it had like Christian books and Christian shirts and Christian music. Everything in there. Different different stores. Stores. Yeah. Now, I grew up in the deep south where okay. I mean, yeah. there was different Christian bookstores yeah. on every corner. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. So this this was a real thing. I right. didn't this wear is the what tees. you did. I wore the What Would Jesus Do bracelet. Oh, the bracelet. I know they've made a comeback, yeah. but yeah, they came out when too. I was a teenager. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I did okay. wear that. that was, I don't right. think that was that lame. Well, it was between. <laughs> oh, it was, you know, it was good. I think right? I think that the equivalent is concert tees today. You know, you go sure. to a Christian concert and you get a T-shirt and it has the phrase of something that was from the song or whatever. Yeah. But it was just like there wasn't really really great Christian music back in the 90s. And mm-hmm. so we had Christian tees instead, yeah. you know, right. that just had a funny, you know, punny statement. It was basically like a meme on a shirt. Kind mm. of. That's exactly yeah. what That's it was. That's the best way to describe right? it. Yeah. It's a meme on a shirt. It predated memes, right? They're, yeah. they're, they're just great dad jokes. <laughs> yeah. That's what they I are. like that. You know, yeah. and when I say great, I mean, my daughters still like make fun of me for every single dad joke. And but then they laugh. And they, That's good. They, they, they do think I'm funny sometimes. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I think it was a cool, like, it was really good to see a different perspective on how um, the Lord's name can be taken in vain, right? Which yeah. is the third commandment. Yep. Um, I had never thought about it that way. I want to be honest with you. Like, the things that Pastor Andy was talking about in that sermon and how we can make light and, and take the, the Lord's name lighthearted. Mm-hmm. Um, I never had thought about it that way. It was such, so eye opening for me. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was so interesting. And one of the quotes he said was, how I speak about God is how I worship God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that one hit me pretty hard because, um, you know, sometimes we use words like OMG or praise the Lord or hallelujah yeah. after just trivial things. And mm-hmm. so that really caught me. And I think that goes along with the Christian tease of of like, is that really honoring and putting God's name in, in, in the reverence that it deserves. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was definitely uh, a different way mm-hmm. to see that. Um, you know, maybe initially you think, okay, it's just using God's name like in a curse word or something like yeah. that. But mm-hmm. Which is the way, way I used to know it, right? right? Yeah. yeah. But this was way deeper. Yeah. And so the, the way that he showed that was false promises, false prophets, mm-hmm. um, false pretenses and false platitudes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so I think it'd be good if we just kind of talk about each of those right now. Like what does it mean to, um, you know, false promises and, and how does that correlate to honoring God's Oh, we're in name? that right now. Yeah, let's season. dive like, We in. have teenagers, yeah. so, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's let your yes be yes. You yeah. know, yeah. when you say you're going to do something, let's do it. Yeah. Amen. You know, yes. if you say your yes, you know, say what you're going to do and then follow mm-hmm. through with it. But we attach false promises to God so often in saying things are like, well, um, I, I believe that uh, God is going to do this, mm-hmm. you know, and I believe that God is going to. And so this is what I feel like I need to do and whatnot. So all of these kind of link together. Uh-huh. But in that whole regard to just like, I promise, I, you know, I, I, I swear, you know, uh-huh. I'm going mm-hmm. to or, you know, uh, and then actually taking God's name in vain in some way, shape or form. And, you know, when in. In reality, it's all about integrity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. Yeah. Like God was helping them understand what it meant to have integrity. And because they were God's chosen people, everything they did would be a reflection of who he was. Mm-hmm. And so that what, what's made it even more important is for them to be honest and have integrity and follow these rules mm-hmm. and these laws because they weren't just boundaries to say, don't, don't, don't. They were I want you to be free to live a right. life that's full and you're going to destroy your lives if you don't follow some of these things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just thinking about like, that's the way that we carry his character, mm-hmm. you know? So if, if, if I, if I give a word on something, then I need to follow through with it because I'm representing God yeah. mm-hmm. in that. And yeah. that's the way that people get to see him in our lives is, yeah. is how we live with integrity, how we follow through yeah. on things. Yeah. So, um, that's something I have to work on. Yeah. So do it's, I take the Lord's name in vain? If you would have asked me that before this, right? Yeah. I'd be like, no, no I'm good with that. No, right? that's not me. When we talk about it that yeah. way, yeah, 
I don't know if I always follow through on my word. So definitely yeah. convicting. It's it's so hard. And uh, I love the second one. So false prophecies. Um, I, I think that one, I've seen that one play out. And I think people mean well. Like, yeah. I, I don't think people are being malintent. But it's so easy to go up to somebody. And you, for example, mm-hmm. Jared, I could go up to you and be like, hey, God told me that, you know, you're really struggling with this. I, mm-hmm. I don't really know that. Like, I could have a conviction that maybe I felt. But what we do is we put it on God to say, God told me instead of me coming to you and being honest and say, hey, I see this. Right. Or as a friend, I want to come to you. It's almost like a security blanket for us, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. then it's a false promise and now a false prophecy on top yeah. of it. And that's where it's like, no, like I'm speaking for me in my experience, but that one was really eye-opening yeah. for me because so it's, it's not, so easy to It's not to our word. Or it is our it's word. It's our word. We can't yeah. say that it's his word. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's, it's, putting, word. it's putting words in, in God and in God's, trying mouth. To, in God's yeah. mouth and saying, well, here's what he told me. Right. Mm-hmm. When but there's it, a way to go about it. Because yeah, there's a some bright people, way to do it. He's given people the, the absolutely, gift of absolutely. But it, absolutely. absolutely. To be able to look at somebody in the face and say like, hey, it, how are you? Mm-hmm. How are you really? And without it being like, God told me to come to you. Exactly. Right. exactly. I, like he, he did that because then it's about a false platform. Absolutely. Like yeah. We're putting ourselves on a pedestal and a yeah. platform God and spoke saying, to me and you oh yeah, to yeah. yeah. I'm the one you yeah. should be listening yeah. to right mm-hmm. now. Instead of something as simple as, Hey, how are you really doing? Yep. Uh-huh. Like, right. I, I really thought that I should just reach out to you and yep. just see how you're doing. Uh-huh. Yep. Instead of just putting God's name in the midst of mm-hmm. that. Now, do I text people all the time? Like God put you on my heart today. Sure. And I just wanted to pray. I just wanted to let you know, I'm praying for you. That's yep. it. Yeah. And something as simple as that, not saying this prophetic word, yeah. Yeah. That's like you need to turn from this or you need to like do this in your life or even something like this because this happens so often within uh, youth, kids, student ministry and whatnot. Yeah. It's like God has a calling on your life right. and to look at somebody and, and say that with such authority but not actually understand the complexities of what God is doing right. in their life. And that that might be something that God's working on them in, mm-hmm. but it's not yours to say that. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a big deal. And, and he that. said God's will is his word mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit illuminates his word. Yep. So it has to all tie back to truth, which is Absolutely. God's truth, yes. not my yep. truth or my ideology. We can speak life over people, mm-hmm. but we need to make sure that we're speaking God's truth over people yeah. Yeah. and not our truth. Absolutely. When I I loved what he said too is like anything that someone says to you or anything he preaches from the platform, take it back to scripture. Mm-hmm. Like hold it against yeah. what yeah, God's yeah, word yeah. says because God will always be found in God's word. And That's so I good. just thought that was so good that you yeah. can always go back to that and compare and contrast like, okay, actually what they said is biblical. So I am going to take that into consideration. Uh-huh. Now I'm going to ask the Lord, what what did you mean by that? Uh-huh. Or it's you know, that did not line up to scripture and now I'm yeah. going to just kind of brush that aside and, you know, man got in the way there. Yeah, so, I think just yeah. doing this, um, taking the time to prepare for these roundtables mm-hmm. has mm-hmm. caused me to really dig deeper. You know, I hear the message and I apply it and I take it or I take it and I apply it. But digging deeper yeah. so that you can now communicate it to someone else. I think yeah. there's a there's yeah. a different kind of accountability. There's a different Absolutely. kind of responsibility yeah. in that. Yeah. So the next one is false pretenses. Yep. Uh, if I present myself as a Christian, I should also act like it. Ugh. That's so good. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and so true. And so he, true. I think he used the example of businesses and you have a cross or you have a fish on your little fish logo. Sure or maybe if you got a Mountain View sticker, sticker on the back on your of your car. car. Oh, well, that was There's too. a reason <sighs> maybe I haven't put one on my yet. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Is it, who's right. driving the car? Yeah, that's the honest <laughs> question. <laughs> That's funny. When uh, when we put an emblem on us and yeah. we say like this is this is the who I represent, I think that's yeah. something that we should take uh, take very seriously. You yeah. know, when we as they're sports teams, you know, mm-hmm. when they're a true fanatic, when they're truly somebody who um, who supports that team. Ne- they'll never say anything bad about that team, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't Even matter. Even if they're lousy. Even if, if they are horrible, yeah. they will always yeah. find a way to put the blame on somebody else. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You, that's, that's that. But they so are true. truly like, and they're just like, no matter what, ride or die. The allegiance. I am, I am yeah. for this team or I am for this person or whatnot. And so often our allegiances are tested when our character is put to the test yeah. or when the facts are put to the test. So mm-hmm. if it's like truly... Are you following Jesus? Are you putting God first in your life? Are you following, you know, you know, not putting any other gods before me and not having idols and not taking the names of the name of the Lord in vain, any of these things? It should be shown by all of your actions, yeah. not just who you who you are when you show up to church, right. not just who you are when you're, um, well, well, let's say this, in front, in front of people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's who you are when you're with no one right. behind right. the scenes that yeah. matters more. Again, it so goes back to some of that integrity and that character. The word, 
your words and your works, yeah. both yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. So I've been challenging the works part of it. Like, I think I have enough knowledge that I can speak it, mm-hmm. but do I really live it out yeah. every day? I don't know. Again, yeah. these are this is challenging. And it's hard, and it's hard to yeah. do too. On the surface, yeah. I'm like, man, no, I got this one, right? Yeah, you this know, commandment of three, no problem. But <laughs> then when we dive in, I'm like, dang. And then the the yeah. fourth point was false platitudes, right? Yeah. Um, I just have in here things like uh, profanity is when you treat his name lightly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, such like again, that was really eye opening for me. You make his yep, me making God small. Praise, yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah. All the time, something you know, somebody tells you something that's we good news. Trivial oh, or Lord. common. I got a parking space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> praise the Lord. Jesus. Favor and fair. Favor and fair. Blessed and highly favored. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> are like, you really? Yeah, like, you know, literally. But yeah, I wrote down when you use his name all the time, it loses its weightiness. Yeah. 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 So true. Yeah. yeah. Or even this, like, I was thinking about what vain really means other than that song about you're so vain. You're so vain. vain you know, <laughs> um, but it's when we give, serve, love for our own benefit, yes. but attach God's name to it. Ooh. It's when we are doing something, but it's really for our own benefit. It's for our own glory. It's for our own mm. selfishness, or it's so that other people will look at us and go, oh, look how good they are, so that we yeah. puff ourselves up. When we do that, th- there's vanity in it. But when we attach God's name to it, then it's profanity. Yeah. Like That's when yeah. we cross the line. Like, yeah, okay, right. people are going to be vain. Sure. But it's when we attach God to something that we're and doing in vain. And then it's just like that yeah. is when we cross the line and we break this commandment. Because, again, it's not just about a rule. It's about a lifestyle mm-hmm. that is to help us understand what it means to live a godly life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that it's about a heart posture, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about the posture of your heart and how are you approaching God and your relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Is it a big deal? Mm-hmm. Is like, are you you're truly in in awe of what Jesus did on the cross mm-hmm. for us and how big of a deal that is? Or it's like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, Jesus has got my back. Mm-hmm. It's like it's a different heart posture. Mm-hmm. And am I choosing? Yeah. Am I choosing to lift up his name and bow exactly. my knee to him? Yep. Or am I going to be forced to? So I'm going to read Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Yeah. God yeah. has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so mm-hmm. that the name of Jesus, mm-hmm. yep. that's key, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Will mm-hmm. I bow and honor him by my choice my words and works or will i be forced to one day in a painful way yeah Mm -hmm. yeah okay let's move on over to the next commandment probably the area where we will most (laughs) often have to bow Bow. yes sometimes you might be forced to bow yeah Yeah. in regard to rest yeah tell you what i sat in tears in the front row as Mm. i thought about some people in my life that i have watched their lives crumble because Mm. they wouldn't slow down because they wouldn't rest or because they said like i'm doing this for my family and so i Mm. like and that so often reveals so if we go back to the the all four commands that we've hit the Mm -hmm. who Mm -hmm. the the is like who are we worshiping um how do we worship that's the idols like Mm -hmm. do we have idol worship Mm -hmm. the what what do we say about god and and who he is but then when we actually set time aside for god is so important and if we don't do that even if it's in the name of our family even if it's in the name of making sure that we provide um then what we're doing is we're showing more trust in ourselves then we are saying that we we trust God. It mm-hmm. says to remember it and keep it holy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people remember Sunday. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They remember yeah. I need a day of rest, but do you keep it holy, holy, holy and set yeah. apart yeah. for something that is beneficial to you and your spiritual walk mm-hmm. and to your entire family? And, and is it a different day? Is it different? Does it look different than the other okay. six days? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I thought that's a great way to be able to distinguish yep. practical. Right. And and because everybody's rest is going to look different, yep. it's not always just taking a nap. Like Daniel was saying, his his mind is always active. So for him to do rest is to use his hands. Yeah. But me, like my mind, I just sometimes I just need nothingness. I need mm-hmm. quiet. I need mm-hmm. to sit on the back porch and, and yeah. read a book and not talk to people. Yeah. For yeah. sure. <laughs> okay. Not talk yeah, people. I mean, that was Amen. one of the Preach. like why we Sabbath. Um, I don't understand that. Yeah. I just want to be around people. Yeah. I think, yeah, like once I had kids and then once I started working in, I worked remote for a long time and then yeah. working in an office around people, I realized, oh, yeah, no, I do need some space, you know, yeah. for me to yeah. refuel by myself too. Because I would say I'm on that. Like Pastor, I'm like the 51 percent extroverted. Then there's 49 yeah. percent of me that still needs to get recharged. And we all have both. Yeah. It just depends on how, when, We're how and when scale. that comes yeah. out. Sure. And I think that one of the struggles, though, that and the challenges 
that I recognized in this is that when you have families with blended um, uh, needs, oh, you know, yeah. you know, and so you have kids that are more extroverted versus introverted. Oh, we have, got it. That makes sense. We have yeah. four extroverts in my house and one introvert. That's right. And I'm Oof. just like, we don't know what to do half the time. Yeah. <laughs> and she's four, so she can't even communicate half, you know, yeah. like, yeah. I just want to be alone. Just don't put me in. And we're just like, oh, why don't you go say hi to these people? She's like, Mm-mm. No, absolutely no, not. Do not make me do that. <laughs> and we're just like, but that's the Jesus thing to do, right? It's to be extroverted. I was challenged with this years back. Yeah. And so hear this, anybody who's watching, um, Jesus loves everyone. And the church is made up of not just extroverts. It's introverted people as well. We all need one another. That's right. And we need both sides of that. We need all the different blends of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Because actually the introverts actually probably understand rest way better sometimes than the extroverted people. Is because they've created natural rhythms because they know that's what they need to Mm -hmm. be able to to operate and to function. (laughs) Um, And so, yes, there's so many complexities with that and all the different temperaments and whatnot. But the reality is was this phrase that stuck out so much to me was, if you don't learn to take a break, you will break. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you will break. Something will break in you. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it may be a rest from your solitude. Mm-hmm. Like maybe you need to be with people instead of right. only being with yourself. It should look different. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's look at some of the things here. Pastor Daniel talked about six reasons why we Sabbath. The first one is we remember the work that Jesus did on the cross or remember Jesus' work. Right, we do not work for our salvation because Jesus paid for our salvation. Yeah, it's not do do do. Yep, it's dun, not do do do. And and that one for me was so I a lot of this is eye opening. Right, all of this series this has been really good. So good because I am a task oriented person. Like I love my list. I love. I I feel so accomplished when I'm working through a list. Like that's mm-hmm. how I feel productive. Is I'm going through this list. I've got it done. Everything's feeling great. And if I'm not doing the stuff, that's when I start to feel like there's something I'm doing something wrong Mm -hmm. um so that for me was so good it's like it doesn't have to always be about the list it can be about like a relationship with someone Mm -hmm. and that's something that I've been challenging myself in is like I have to be able to rest from not doing a list Mm -hmm. and my wife she's sitting next to me like doing this the whole time because (laughs) she's like listen yeah well when we're at home you know I'm the one that's like oh we got to do the laundry we got to do the dishes we got to do the floors we got to do there's always something right it never ends never and I'm the one that's always looking at that. And I have to be able to shut my brain off to say, mm-hmm. like, no, it's not time to do those things right now. But it's yeah. so hard. And, like, just yeah. to be present and just to be Look present. somebody in It'd the eye there. and hear them. It's so oh, I can't hard. tell you how many times. Well, because yeah, I, I, I have a house with, you know, three girls in it. And they are messy. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm calling you out. Uh, mm-hmm. It just is what it is. <laughs> but I tend to get home and my, my wife will just say, just sit down. Like, you don't have to do anything. I'm like, but... All of those things need to get done. And so, like, while I may not be a task-oriented mm-hmm. person, I see those things and it's like, I don't feel at peace unless all of these things are done. Mm-hmm. But if that's the mentality I have with life, we will never be done. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. always mm-hmm. more to do. Maybe this for six days you get the stuff done, but then on that seventh day, it's like, it's just, just let it be. Let it sit. Yeah. I don't know. Should. I don't know. I, we should. I don't know. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. You, that's where you just leave the house. So I then you're not looking the, at it. Go. There's that's a different the, way to rest. Way to do Sometimes that's, that's the reverse. And it's like the dishes have been sitting for six days and now we have to do them on one day. That was one of the points, wasn't it? On the six Sabbath killers, poor work ethic. Yeah. 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 You know, you don't set yourself up to be able to enjoy your Sabbath because you already Sabbath all week. Yep. I might be a little bit in that vein, to be honest. Like, you know, because the introvert. You just take a little Sabbath every day. There you go. Just many Sabbaths. If we go back to what these, these, uh, these laws were all about, it was about the nation of Israel and what God had to work out of them. And mm-hmm. one of the things that that they needed then and that we need even today is to save ourselves from ourselves. That was one one of these points on yeah. why why we need the Sabbath is to save ourselves from ourselves. Um, and I, I went to this uh, thought is before we enslave ourselves. Why? It's because we are constantly moving back towards being enslaved just as the Israelites were. Yeah. They were freed from their slavery for a reason so they could live in freedom. But mm-hmm. we typically go back to enslaving ourselves by saying, I have to do all these things. I need all of this to be done for me to be at peace mm-hmm. and to just not be able to rest is this slave mentality. Yeah. Well, yeah. and then the the specific of the Pharaoh in the phone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. one yeah. for sure. Pharaoh called your phone. Oh, man. Yep. Six, like, seven gosh. killers. Yes. No, I've yep. been trying to tangibly, like, just put my phone, phone somewhere, somewhere in the yes. house and just yeah. don't even have it near me. Don't yeah. even have that Pharaoh. Because it's not me. even like, 
I don't I feel I don't feel like I'm like it's not even conscious conscious mm-hmm. that I'm doing it right it's yeah, like you I really buzzed know. and you're just like you're just and like, then oh, immediately open and yeah. starts and I'm like what is happening it's like an addictive like habit that your hand just like does uh-huh. yep. and so I'm like I had already turned off notifications mm-hmm. for social media a while ago because yeah. of that but even just like a text message an email a slack community, anything and you're just like immediately and now I'm in here and I was in the middle of a conversation and there's always somebody. something else too oh, oh and, while always. we're sitting yes, here my yeah. phone has buzzed like five times and right, my brain's yes, like yeah. what's going on right now I'm really curious <laughs> right. but I haven't checked it and I won't oh good job <laughs> good job you gotta live you shut it that out just wait, today. just wait till the camera is off and then no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's but, awesome. Yeah, the um, I liked the resting yeah. from your work instead of resting for your work. Like that's yeah. a killer, right? Yeah, yeah, that would yeah. Be really good. Point. Yeah, because like I want to show up as my best self, yeah. right? And so if yeah. I'm not taking that time to rest so that I can refuel and come back as my best self, then yeah. I'm just gonna continually feel like I need to rest from what I'm doing, whether it's work at home, work at mm-hmm. at my job, work as you know a friend, a wife, a mom, whatever that looks like. Like yeah. I'm gonna constantly want to escape from that. If I'm not getting the actual rest that I need to feel, yeah. feel refueled to be the best version of myself for all of those people. Yeah. yeah. And and it is true. We were created for work. Mm-hmm. And it is a way that we can worship God. We don't worship yeah. the work, but mm-hmm. but um I think so many of us dread it. We dread work, right? Mm-hmm. But if we took the Sabbath, if we took the time to refuel and rest for the mm-hmm. purpose of doing work well, yeah. Yeah. it would change the whole point of all of that yeah. be well, more effective in our work. That's one of, the, that's one of the biggest challenges. I wrote down a few challenges that I think that we face in regards to Sabbath. It's worldly rhythms because we are slaves to the rhythm. Sorry, that's a song reference. Okay. Um, but uh, we are we Don't are enslaved to well, it was from the 80s. It's okay. Um, the, the rhythms of the people who kind of are more in control of our schedule than we are sometimes Mm -hmm. so it can be the sports schedules it can be our boss it can be some of the things that we've added into our life or that's just like well this is just my norm Mm. so how do i create margin when i can't even control that and so that those worldly rhythms and that say oh you always have to be busy you always have to do this or i don't even have time for church because well i have to do all of these other things Mm. and so that's when we start feeling this separation from god is because we haven't even prioritized that day to even just show up to church Mm -hmm. and then we expect like god to show up in the rest of our week when we haven't given him one hour of our week and i think that's that's something that's very difficult but we also we have hobbies that drain us and then don't fill us Mm -hmm. so they're actually more draining than they are like the life giving to us um and and then this the comparison game Mm-hmm. So we can pair our schedules in our lives with with other people's and like that, we should be doing we should be doing all of that. these things yeah. when in reality it's like let them live their life but like we don't have to measure up to what their schedule yeah. looks like sure we have to do what's best for our family for our walk with Jesus yeah. and that's going to look different for everybody mm-hmm. so there shouldn't be this comparison between what's going on in other people's lives because we will end up um, you know killing our Sabbath and we won't mm-hmm. we won't have that. And then people move towards the dependence on other things to help Those satisfy. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, so, I love that coffee. That caffeine. Oh, so good. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Literally, my body does not love it. I have to yeah. share just a funny real quick okay. story. Because on Sunday morning, like in the middle of the day, I had a friend text me saying, like, do you want me to grab you Starbucks on the way? Is it right in the middle of the dependence on Starbucks? Oh, that's and amazing. I'm just drinking an energy drink as <laughs> oh, I get this wow. text. I, was like, I responded. I was like, I'll take a water. It's and fine. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. But I really want the Starbucks. So you know? I had literal conviction in the middle of Look the message. You know. and you I said, said no. It was a I test. No. And you, passed. <laughs> you, passed. you passed the test. Yeah. Self-control. I, you know, all these these four commandments, yeah. is if we just kind of wrap this up, they're all about our relationship with God, right? Yeah. Yes. All of them. That's what they're for. That's what they're about is improving and helping us in our relationship with him. Um, and these, these two, um, you know, they just kind of add to that. This one, specifically with the Sabbath, is if we can rest in God, we can learn how to find Jesus and rest in Jesus. Uh, with our our time off, our Sabbath, we honor that. Then our time on is going to be so much better. Yeah. But we yeah. have to be able to have time off that is f- uh, filling, that is encouraging. Time off that is preparing us for what God is doing and how He's working in our life, and He needs to be a part of that. There is a a, a friend, um, someone I used to work with, uh, who used to do something called Day Alone with God, mm-hmm. a, a dog day, Day Alone with dog God. Day. Yeah. And I thought that was so cool. I've I've done it before. I haven't done it in a while, but going through this series um and and then specifically the sabbath when it remind me of that is like that's so important to do if i can have a day alone with god and rest with him mm-hmm. then my time on is going to be so much better with yeah. my family with work uh with the people i'm around it's just going to be so much better yeah. but it's it's a discipline 
right? Mm -hmm. For sure. It's really, really hard to do. Uh, but we hope that you've been enjoying this roundtable uh, with us over the last few weeks as we've been going over um, the Ten Commandments. Um, we're going to continue this, and we'll mm -hmm. be back here in just a little bit. But we're praying for you guys. We love you guys, and I hope you're getting uh, out of this as much as we are. It's been really great for us and great conversation. Um, of course, we'd love to connect with you. If you need some prayer or want to talk to somebody, go ahead to go ahead and go to our app, um, and there's a way to see, get prayer there. Uh, but other than that, we'll see you guys back here soon. All yeah, right. I'd love to pray okay. for you guys, and, and then we'll see you back next two weeks, I think. Yep. Great. Yeah, two awesome. Weeks. Uh, God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for, uh, God, this great conversation that you allowed us to have. Um, God, and for the conviction. Um, God, every single one of these commandments, it really causes us to look internally, God, and ask ourselves some great questions. Um, God, how are we uh, using your name? God, are we taking our time to rest uh, with you, God? Um, are you the God that we are worshiping, God, uh, above all else? Or are we making idols out of other stuff, God? These are all so important, God, um, to help our relationship with you grow deeper and grow stronger, God. Um, and it requires us to ask some very big questions of ourselves, God, um, and, and questions that only we can answer. God, so I pray that as we continue to talk through this, God, I pray that you work in our souls, you work in our hearts. God, and anybody watching, God, as they're navigating navigating this, God, I pray that you work in their hearts and their souls. Uh, God, to be able to ask themselves those things, um, and God, and be able to uh, fully trust in you and lean on you, and God, what you've already done on the cross uh, through Jesus, God, because it's already done. It's not do it. It's already done for us, God. Um, and, and you want that for us, God, to give us that, that eternal life, God. But thank you again for this conversation, for this group, uh, people that, God, that we get to do this every week. Um, God, and I pray that you continue to work, uh, God, in our lives, and you continue to show us, God, um, how our relationship with you can improve. God, thank you again so much. Uh, we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus today. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you back here next time.